uh, Williams score and how can he judge from 2D uh, whether this mitral valve is feasible for below mitral valve velocity. But I would just focus here on the rule of three dimensional echo in the assessment of the mitral valve for uh, feasibility uh, for mitral balloon valve velocity. As we all know, the rheumatic heart disease, it starts by this inflammatory process, Ashraf's nodules. One of the earliest signs that you can see in mitral valve rheumatic affection is the disappearance of the indentations in the posterior scalp. And then, of course, thickening of the leaflets that usually starts at the tips, back to the basis, and then commissural fusion, and finally the calcification that can happen either at the commissure or at any part of the mitral valve. From the left ventricular aspect, the subvalvular apparatus usually fuses together and then amalgamates and then shortens and reduces the outflow of uh, the mitral valve. Again, it is mentioned uh, by Nishimura and, and his colleagues that planimetry as well as pressure half time are the most validated methods before 3D for sure and the most widely uh, used methods to assess the severity of mitral valve along with the uh, mean gradient. However, we know that 2D echocardiography has the inherent disadvantage of being only 2D. Looking to the mitral valve from the parasitic long axis, I can see only one slice from the anterior leaflet and one slice from the posterior leaflet. And if you are speaking about the planimetry, all of us knows the limitations of the planimetry. If the patient doesn't have parasternal window, you lost it. No more planimetry can be done in 2D. And even if the patient has a good window, but the axis of the LV is oblique, you will not be able really to get a real short axis at the tips of the mitral valve. This is number one. Number two, that it doesn't consider or take the commissures into account. As we will see later, not all the mitral valves are flat in their opening. Sometimes the commissures are a bit open compared to the tips of the mitral valves, like a smiley face. The tips are anterior and the angles, which are the commissures at posterior. So by any method, at the end, like in this case, we have here the medial commissure is open. Open means there is a blood coming through, but in planimetry, you just measure this at the tips and consider this as the mitral valve area, but you ignored the commissures, and we know that. The guidelines t tells you, close your eyes, just complete the trace and give the mitral valve area. On the other hand, three-dimensional echo gives you the opportunity to look at the mitral valve, the whole mitral valve in one view, whether from the left atria or from the left ventricular perspective, whether from transthoracic, like in this case, I'm here looking to the mitral valve from transthoracic, uh, uh, window from the left ventricular side, left atrial side, here from the LV but from transesophageal echo and this is from the left atrial, left atrial view for, by uh, transesophageal echo. So all the axes can give you good picture for the mitral valve. Forget all the words in this slide, I'm just saying the image acquisition is easy for the mitral valve. Mitral valve is the best valve to be captured by 3D, it is, especially if it is rheumatic. Thick, slower in motion and ju just direct in, in front of the probe. So nothing else you need to get a good picture for the mitral valve. Of course, the higher spatial and tumor resolution for the 2EE makes it superior compared to the transthoracic in, in terms of selecting patients for mitral balloon valve plasty. The feasibility of rotating the volume from side to side like this enables us to appreciate each commissioner uh, at, at, at one time, it is one volume, the same volume, the same patient, the same cardiac cycle, you just can rotate the, the view and, say, and see the commissures from side to side, the whole leaflets, and the reduced opening of the mitral valve. On the other side, as I said before, it is only one slice of A2 and one slice of B2. You don't know what's happening here or there or anywhere in between. And we all know that the affection of the leaflet mobility can be asymmetrical. So seeing a valve opening and closing from that view doesn't mean that all the coaptation line is moving the same way. It can be restricted. We have seen some patients like one half of the valve is completely zipped, closed, and the other half is opening. So that can be deceiving if you are using one view. Unless you sweep your probe with a TE or transthoracic from side to side to get an idea about the whole valve, and then you will end up depending on your mental reconstruction to imagine how this mitral valve looks like. 
Here are some examples. The funnel shaped of the mitral valve, we can see the dooming of the mitral valve, but in 3D, or from the left atrial aspect, you can see some calcification and reduced uh, uh, opening of the mitral valve. Commercial fusion, I can say that this is one of the most important advantages for three-dimensional echo. Just tilting the volume, usually it's better to look from the left ventricular aspect because you face the mitral valve. If you are confused whether this is the left atrium aspect or from the left ventricular aspect, this is a short axis view. If you can see a chamber contracting, this is the left ventricle. And if you tilted the volume a little bit down or up, you will see the LVOT above the anterior mitral leaflet. So here is the lateral commissure, and the other side is the medial commissure of the mitral valve. This is an example of normal mitral valve. All the commissures are open all the way to the annulus, and here both of them are fused. This is the medial commissure, and this is the anterolateral commissure, and this is the dooming of the mitral valve in 3D perspective. Look at the mitral valve here. This is what I was trying to say. Mitral valve opening is not always planar. It's like a smiley face. So the commissures are at the angles and the tips are a little bit like distal compared to the commissures. That means there is no way for such mitral valve to be traced in a planar method like 2D planimetry or even 3D planimetry. You will be missing the commissures on both sides and we will know later how to tackle that. Commercial calcification is also very important if you are speaking about feasibility of mitral balloon valvuloplasty. So our aim is the calcium. If the middle scallops are calcified but the commissures are free, this patient might be feasible for balloon valvuloplasty. However, if all the leaflets are healthy, however, are lumps of calcium like in this patient, calcium here, calcium there, both commissures are calcified, no point of dilating. Uh, this valve because balloon dilatation acting is acting by splitting the fused commissure. If the commissures are calcified, what will happen only like tearing of the mitral valve. And this is how calcification looks like in uh, real anatomy. This is an example of severe calcification of the mitral valve, calcification all around with a huge lump of calcium at the medial commissure. I have to admit something that 3D has a problem with the calcification because if the calcified tissue is side by side with the normal healthy tissue, they will appear the same. So it will not differentiate between the normal and calcified tissue if they are at the same level. It gives you use of color depending on the depth. So what, what should you do? Number one, look at the mobility. If it is prolapsing, you will see it going up and down. If it is calcified, it will be fixed. This is number one. Number two, decrease the gain down as much as you can. Once you decrease the gain, you will get rid out, you will get rid of the tissues. First, the calcium will remain, and then you will see like a, a map for the calcium all over the mitral valve. So by the location and motion and the gain. Leaflet mobility and pliability, we, we said that. You just look at the mitral valve from like holistic view for the mitral valve and see whether mobility and pliability is fixed or symmetrical throughout the mitral valve. Subvalval apparatus, this is an example of Transthoracic, not transesophageal. You can see the subvalvular apparatus here is not severely affected. Still, the mitral valve is opening and they are not fused uh, a lot here during diastole and here during systole. This is an example of one of the patients referred for me for assessment of balloon mitral valvuloplasty. Again, I was focusing on the appendage, and here it looks from like the first impression was very pliable. Yes, the posterior leaflet is fixed, which is like very common in balloon and in rheumatic patients, but the anterior leaflet is okay. Again, it is uh, really mobile. So I was about to sign this patient off and let him go for balloon, and the mean gradient was 18, 1, 8. So, and the patient was really symptomatic. Then I did 3D. So the 3D showed me this is from the left atrial view can see the mitral valve, commissures are yes fused, but not fully fused, and the subvalval apparatus was like fused together, acting like a sheet in front of the mitral valve, obstructing the flow. So that the main problem here, which created the gradient, is the subvalval apparatus. Look at from the left ventricular aspect, if you remember the previous case, three codes of subvalval apparatus here, it is one band obstructing the flow, and the commissures are not really bad. So this patient, Problem is not in the commissures. This is in subvalval apparatus, and I didn't know that till I did the 3D. 
I cropped the subverted apparatus and then relook to the mitral valve again. Looking from the left ventricular aspect, you can see here the commissures are here and the tips are here and they are not really bad. So you can see the commissures are long way in compared to the tips. So I was showing that to one of my colleague surgeon to convince him this is that the gradient is really because of the subverter apparatus. And then after he saw me crop the subverter apparatus, he asked me a very nice question. So what is the gradient, gradient now after you crop the subverter apparatus? I hope later we will be able to know. So calculation now of the mitral valve area. We have a long list of methods. We know that planimetry is the load independent method. However, we all of us said uh, no, uh, the limitations for that, and I have mentioned that over or underestimation, and it, it is tied by the parasternal window, and again, it doesn't count for the, op for the open commissures. 3D planimetry has overcome many of these problems because one volume, whatever the view is, even from trans uh, or, or uh, sub uh, subcoastal view, as long as you can see the mitral valve, go ahead and capture it and put it in the MPR mode, multiplanar reformatting, put your lines exactly at the ostium of the mitral valve, and you have the luxury in the MPR to rotate these lines. So you are not tied by the axis, you are not tied by the window, and then you can get planimetry for the mitral valve. However, we will face the remaining problem of the open commission, like in this patient, because at the end of the day, you are tracing the planimetry on a 2D frame that needs a planar opening. So how to tackle this problem of the commissures? The MVN method is a method, a tool in the QLab, which is dedicated to assist the mitral regurgitation and the, and the prolapse. And it traces the malcoaptation gap in mitral regurgitation and gives you an area of MR orifice area, the regurgitant orifice area. I used this method and I lied add the software, instead of giving the software a systolic frame with prolapse, I give it the diastolic frame with the maximum mitral valve opening. And then I trace that. And as you can see, it really traces the commissures in a real 3D fashion. So it goes back to the commissures and goes forward to the tips. Real 3D planimetry, if I can call it. And we compare this head to head to the 3D planimetry that I've showed earlier. And both of them are against the Gorlins invasive uh, uh, method, which is the gold standard, and we selected patients that uh, going for mitral balloon valvuloplasty, so those patients doesn't have severely affected subvalvular apparatus uh, to make, in, in a sense, that the hemodynamic significance of the mitral, uh, of, the, of, the, of the gradient is really related to the uh, mitral valve area itself, not the subvalvular apparatus, and we found it more correlated to that, and it was consistently bigger than the 3D planimetry because we counted for uh, the commissures. So we can say that this is the only method in real 3D planimetry that counts for the commissures of the mitral valve. And we can, I encourage you to use it as it is validated to even differentiate between moderate and severe mitral stenosis if the case is not clear. Mitral valve scoring, we have Dr. Ashraf Anwar published this very nice paper in, in JAYS. This is the only 3D uh, echo score for the mitral valve that actually give it give um, special uh, importance and more consideration for the calcification at the commissures compared to the tips uh, of the middle scallops, which is something missing in the Willens score. During balloon mitral valve velocity, it is very important. 3D guidance, transeptal puncture, we have seen that. Balloon positioning and inflation. So after transeptal puncture, this is very helpful this is one of the procedures that can be done without fluoroscopy. If you have a pregnant patient, for example, which are very common, especially in Egypt or India or even now, even the UK, before of a lot of like Asian uh, descent uh, population there, you can see positioning of the balloon within the mitral valve orifice. If the atrial appendage is here, inflation of the balloon, and then comparison of the results before and after, you can see it. This is transthoracic. You can see the commissure is now open. And even by transesophageal, there was a calcium here. There was no calcium here. That's why this commissure didn't open fully, but this commissure was open. Better so assessment of the result and to see whether you need to do something more or not. I refer you to this, the new textbook of three-dimensional echo, and I had the privilege to read the chapter of mitral stenosis and mitral congenital anomalies that was just published one month ago, very updated. So in conclusion, 3D echo should be incorporated in the evaluation of the mitral valve especially in, if you need to assess 
whether it is feasible for valvuloplasty or not, and it helps definitely inside the procedure itself. Thank you so much. What does the interventionist need from the echocardiographer? We want Dr. Hani with me because I just learned a couple of new things with 3DT. I have to say with the mitral commissurotomy, the, 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 the late form in Canada has been struggling with the same as all across the globe. I have to open a clinic uh, in, in a small town.